What's going on, YouTube? We're back with the shades. We're continuing our let's play of Katawa Shoujo. The last time we left off, we um we see uh Shizune seems to be paying for our food a lot. Um, we finished student council work. We missed dinner, so we're ordering takeout. So yay! And Shizune is paying for us, so we ordered a bit of food. So anyway, let's get to it. Shizune impatiently twists twirls a pair of chopsticks between her fingers as we wait for the food to arrive. Hey, where'd you get those? <clears throat> This isn't the first time you ordered out Hee-chan, and they always give us a ton of chopsticks, for some reason, even when we tell them there are only two people. And you two have accumulated a lot of them from going from a lot of long nights eating takeout in the office. And that's exactly it! <laughs> I'm overstating it. Ha! That's right, Chi-chan. Hey, Chi-chan, did you know that, you, that once you've collected 100 pairs of chopsticks from ordering out, we'll be able to take over the universe? I used to think that too, when I was little. Hee-chan, are you gonna break them down the middle? I can never do it right, so I found a little pile of chop found a little pile of chopsticks she chan has saved up and practiced on at least twenty of them. She's really mad about that. I let out a laugh as she turns bright leg with indignation. I didn't know that she had such a childish side. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, when the food arrives, I dig in heartily, drinking one of the tiny cans of soda she's they bought for us from one of the vending machines in the hall. Thanking them both for the food, I head back to the dorms, ready to turn in for the night. The dorms are eerily quiet except for the sounds of portable TVs and radios murmuring unintelligibly behind thin walls. Excuse me. It's quiet here at night, and very peaceful. I can hear the crickets chirping outside my window, and see actual stars when I look up. Tired, I try to fall asleep as quickly as I can, only feeling slightly robbed of my Saturday. <clears throat> Excuse me. Once again, I could have added this clip to the last part. The next day, I wake up feeling a little lightheaded. It's almost noon already. Sleeping late is fine since it's Sunday and there are no classes. Not just a Sunday, though, but a festival as well. From my window, I can already see some people at the soba booth slinging noodles onto plates for people with a craving for low-quality food. I throw back a handful of my morning meds and ponder how to spend the day. There will be a few exams in the coming week, but I don't consider those as ominous as others, so I'm not as worried about them as I probably should be. With no urgent obligations regarding education, I should be free to spend the day at the festival as I like. Finishing my morning routine, I exit into the hallway, attending to go out and find something to eat. Passing by his door, I decide to see what Kenji's up to today out of impulse. Why? I hate him. He deserves to die. He's a butt. Also, I'm going to lower the music, because I always forget to do that. Why is it so high? There we go. I'm curious if he has any plans, since everyone's do everyone is doing something. <clears throat> Then again, I can picture him having built a soundproof shelter in his room. Or possibly something like a fort, complete with no girls allowed sign. Ah, uh, yes, the anti-feminist bullshit that he spouts. Hang on, guys. Alright, guys, I'm back. Sorry, just had to pull up the walkthrough real quick. There's not much choices left, so... Hopefully, uh, we we can get onto Shiznit's path real quick. Or possibly... Oh. And with the girls crossed out and body crudely crawled underneath it. Knocking on his door, which is likely devoid of any kind of sign, I hear again the unsettling clicking of at least ten locks being pulled back and the door being opened to crack. Who is it? You're supposed to ask that before you open the door? Oh, it's you. Damn, it's early. It's not really that early. What is it, man? Nothing. Was just gonna ask what you're gonna do today. Half the school is out. Ooh, half the school is out there already. <clears throat> Excuse me. There's phlegm in my throat. The frack? Out where? Why? What? What is- what, what what? It's today special? Why are they there? Who are? I can hear them. It's loud. Don't tell me. Has the invasion begun? He solemnly, suddenly looks more alarmed. What day is it, man? Yeah, I can get- I guess you can't see the big wooden booths outside and people selling stuff. What the hell are you talking about? I have my curtains closed at all times to thwart the snipers. Uh, it's the festival? You know that, right? Oh shit, that's today? Uh, damn. Uh, damn. Damn it. Can't believe I forgot. I don't have any fort. I don't have my fort finished yet. This is bad. Oh God, Kenji, you're such a weirdo. This is gonna be a very bad day. I, it's good you told me this, man. This is gonna be a bad day. Why? Oh man, they're gonna be. They're gonna be everywhere. The people outside my window, socializing. Kenji rubs his temples nervously, suddenly looking very well, very ill. Calm your slow your roll there, Harry Potter. 
It's gonna be loud as hell. Damn, and I was a, I was gonna go out today, but now it's ruined. Everything is ruined. This is awful. This sucks. This sucks. What the hell? This really sucks. I can't go anywhere now. There's nowhere to run. Kenji seems nervous. You could even say he's majorly freaking out. I can't believe this. So that's what today was. Damn, I couldn't even prepare for it. I couldn't even brace myself, and now it's here, and I can't do anything. You should have told me earlier, dude. I mean, at least, I know, but I could have known earlier. Imagine what I could have accomplished. Sorry, I thought you knew. Because, you know, everyone on campus knows. So I guess you're not. Go so I guess you're not gonna do anything today. The weather's even good. Yesterday was really was really windy, so I thought today should be would be cold. It's not though, so there's no reason to stay inside. Yeah, I should check the festival out. Kenji groans and covers his face with his hands. Ugh, no, no, I, I can't do that. They'll leave me alive out there. I know it. <sighs> this has to be a joke, but he said it with such a straight face, relatively straight. What are you gonna do? We should hang out in here. You can help me build my fort. We might still make it if we work together. I'm going to have to hang out with student council since I lost a bet. I realized that we didn't agree on what... That I realized that we didn't agree on when and where. I just wait for them rather than risk us meeting each other outside... Uh, risk us meeting each other in the chaos outside. They must be running around and organizing things anyway. It's funny, I would have assumed this, the price for losing the she's in her stupid game to be a lot more severe. This is just pretense for spending time with her. In that case, I guess it, she just wants me to have fun. Even though she can't just can't can't just come out and make her intentions clear, they may be good intentions after all. And I think I'm starting to like her more. <coughs> Ooh, really? I could skip going, but it'd be a waste. And I want to go too. I mean, you know, today seems pretty exciting. If anything, it'll be interesting. The student council? What? That's still around? Isn't it like two dudes? They're both girls. Really? Are they cute? No, damn. No, wait. Are they cute? No, it doesn't matter! I heard the student council president is insane. Whoever it is never talks and only gives orders to flunkies. Shit, they're the same in every school. Sounds like a cold-hearted bitch. Bitches everywhere. If it's two girls, they outnumber you two to get one. That's the dangerous situation, dude. Who knows what can happen? Damn, the student council is just two women, but they hold so much power. They must be stopped. I can see them plotting ways to push their feminist agenda. I can't trust an administration like that. Oh my god. What is this, Twitter? Tumblr? Wait, some sect of Tumblr? This is not cool. Not cool. Shit, damn. Shit, damn. His fingers is scarfed nervously, faster and faster, like he's trying to start a fire. Then slowly begins to calm down the, the, the calm down once a panic attack finishes running against course. I'm going to have to find myself some place to hide it. <gasps> Excuse me. Wow. I am yawning a lot. A safe haven. Then knock the lights out myself so I don't have to experience this horrible day. I have the perfect thing for that. I must prepare now. Don't go to the festival. Okay. Later, dude. The door slowly closes with a loud creak, and I don't know how to feel about what Kenji just said. I ponder what I'd like to do with Shizune and Misha, deciding it's best to, to be extra prepared. I duck back into my room and stock, and stock my wallet with money. I wonder if I have that game where you try to catch goldfish in a paper net. I've never done that, but I've seen that in like Japanese festivals, and I want to try it. It looks difficult because, you know, paper is water-soluble, but whatever. It seems way easier than they make it look. Then again, if I were to catch a goldfish, I'd have no reason, real reason to keep it. What am I going to do with a fish in my tiny room? Cook it? I could give it to Shizune and Misha, but that might be still overstepping my my bounds. Do it! That may have sounded awful because I just put the mic up to my lips, but... <laughs> it's, either, it's a real problem. Both of them are cute, but I don't think I have any chance with either of them. Regardless, I mull over the thought of doing it. I imagine how they might react if I were to give them a gift tonight, like a fish or a doll. Misha probably laughed like she always does. She's they might slap it out of my hand. It might it maybe isn't such a good idea after all. Just do it. You miss all the chances you never take. Come on, just do it. Okay, I think I'm set. A good while later, I decided this could be another psycho test devised by Shizune. Even if it isn't, it's starting to get kind of late. I resolved to just go out and search for them, even though I don't know where I could look. They might be really hard to find today. As soon as I step outside, I almost bump into Shizune. Hi, Shizune. Where's Misha? I try to sign it as best I can, but I'm really just making stuff up. I got to ask Misha to teach me some of this. Here. Here? Misha pops up from behind Shizune, grinning wildly. We just came out to make sure you're coming... <coughs> we just came here to make sure you're coming along with us to the festival. Don't re renege your promise. Promise? I don't think I promised anything. <laughs> Stop trying to get out of it. Come on, Keychan, it'll be fun. You need this anyway. You're gonna become no or you're gonna become a you'll become a no good person. You don't wanna become one of those people who just stays in their dorm all day being paranoid, are you? 
I wonder who they're talking about. I find myself standing over his shoulder at the door to Kenji's room right across from mine. I hope he didn't hear that, but I think Misha wants the opposite. No, of course not. I just want to. Pl I was just playing around a little, and I was right about to leave anyway. You didn't. You two didn't have to come here. Really? <laughs> Shijan was worried you were trying to get out of it somehow. We need you, Hichan. Huh? I think my heart just skipped a beat. I don't have the. T the I don't have the aim to knock the dolls off the pestles of that one game, and Shichan refuses to throw things. Oh. Shizune stares at me, immediately noticing my disappointment. She uncrossed her arms and adjusted her glasses. What do you think? What do you think we met? I refuse to throw anything. Why, Shichan? That is weird. Well, anyway, Hichan, you've thrown a ball before, right? Right? So, you have to come with us. I'm amazed by their logic. I don't know if they're joking or not. If, uh, joking or if they're not. <laughs> I feel offended if, if I didn't know you guys were joking. You're joking, right? It is what it is, Hichan. It is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> well, that's reassuring. Come on, let's go. The deaf band is sitting up inside your window. Misha grabs me by the hand and tries to pull me out the door, but it's clear that she isn't trying at all. Shizun looks at both of us, blushing slightly and fiddling with their glasses impatiently. I'm not used to this kind of casual contact, but I have nothing against it. How could I object? It's still light outside, but the sun is already getting ready to set behind the trees. It looks like half the school is out here, and I can even see some faculty members standing off to the side helping them th themselves with some punch. Huh! <laughs> punch! They're about to empty the entire bowl to the dismay of the girl working the stall. There are some fortune tellers chatting idly with their friends, while others have already gotten started jing sing slinging horoscopes at anyone who walks within range. I think that kind of tactic is a little too aggressive, but it shows that they're into it. It's refreshing to see, but I don't know if I'll be able to get used to it. Well, we should get something to eat. Hungry, Hichan? Come to think of it, I haven't eaten all day, Com considering you just got up. Yeah. I don't really want to eat fried noodles. That's okay, there are other fried foods. Are there any foods that aren't fried? Candy, junk food is the essence of celebrations. Very true! You can't go to a festival and not have, like, the fried whatever they have. I had fried Oreos once. The most unhealthy thing that's ever slid down my throat, but god, it was delicious. <laughs> that was the most unattractive laugh for a woman I've ever made. C come on, I mean, he, Chi Chan will treat you just one thing. One. Just one. Only so you can build an energy for your throwing arm. Ah, but it doesn't look like all the booths are done setting up yet, so you might not be able to get what you want. Let's take a look around, surprised by the number of stalls. It's unbelievable. This festival seems larger than the ones you might see in actual towns. Despite what Nisha said, it seems like half the school is already celebrating. The air is hum humming with the excited chattering of at least half the student body. <sighs> I can smell food cooking and it's only making me hungrier by the second. Come on, Hee-chan, the food is already disappearing fast. If you want takoyaki, we need to move now. I can go for some takoyaki. Come on, let's eat that. All right, I haven't had takoyaki for in forever. I'm game. I've never had takoyaki. It's uh, squid, uh, squid-filled balls of dough. I always wanted to try it. Seems good. Shizune takes off before Misha can even sign it back to her, briskly walking toward the takoyaki stand as Misha and I try to catch up. Misha laughs as she skips f toward Shizune, who asks for three orders of takoyaki by holding up three fingers. I've never noticed it before, but for someone who is obsessed with high-class tea, it's a little weird that Shizune is also it's so into fast food. Hey! Hey! You could, be a, you could be a snob about food all you want, but fried festival food is delicious no matter who you are. Let it happen. I take the plate of... A takoyaki she has me and wonder if I should dig in. It looks extremely hot. I can see the smoke coming off of it and the oil bubbling on the surface. She's named Misha both look at me as if waiting for me to eat before they can begin. I can't back down so I spear one on the tiny plastic fork jauntily sticking up from the corner of the plate. However, before I can even put it in my mouth, She's named Misha begin eating eagerly. She's taking quick but delicate bites out of the takoyaki while Misha eats with a relish like a small child. I guess at the end of the day, both of them are just kids like any other student here. I mean, yeah. This is kind of nice. I don't think I've had a chance like this in a long time just to hang out with other people and enjoy their company. Oh, cute. Even before coming here, I've been going through a very busy year. So busy that I hadn't realized what I've been missing until now. I mean, yeah, you've been in the hospital for, what, months? So yeah, I understand, like, the, the desire for extended social interaction. Here, I feel at peace. This is a soothing atmosphere. I didn't know these kind of festivals still existed. Eh, uh, Hee-chan, you aren't going to eat your food? No, I'm gonna eat it. 
I hope you aren't chickening out because it's too hot. That's not it. Even though teasing is become, <laughs> beginning to come, become endearing. I love teasing between friends. It's so nice because like both of you know you don't mean it. So long as you don't cross the line, you're completely fine. I tease my friends all the time. I eat quickly before my food can get cold, thinking that, it, that the dimly lit pa paper lanterns glowing warmly against the sunset make for a beautiful sight. Before I can finish my last bite of takoyaki, she is in steps in front of me, standing perfectly straight with her arms rigidly behind her back. I can see she's trying her best to look as serious as possible, but e even she can hide her good mood, as, so, as there is a slight smile on her face. <laughs> Come on, he chan let's go play some games. Are they even done setting up? No, but it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. Come on, he chan before it gets too crowded. Misha puts her hand on my shoulder and laughs very loudly. Come on, come on, the prize look great this year. Really, really. Wouldn't you like to win some prizes for two cute girls like us? No, I'm going home. <laughs> sure, why not? Misha flashes, flashes her best cute look, which admittedly is admittedly pretty cute. I look at she and I expect her to do the same, but she looks at me like I'm insane. <laughs> That's funny. Misha, stop doing that. Wait, I'm Misha. <laughs> Heejia, hurry up! You've been holding that place piece of takaki for like a thousand years. <laughs> I like to savor everything I eat, even this. Without warning, Shizune picks up the takoyaki from my hand and plops into her mouth with a smile. It happened so fast that there was no way I could have stopped her. Before I can even fully process what just happened, Misha bursts into laughter, and Shizune smiles at me, probably the closest I've ever seen her come to laughing. I doubt she can laugh. Well, that takes care of that! Shizune grabs my right hand, and Misha grabs my left. You're coming with us. There's a lot to do tonight. You should try harder to enjoy it. Mm. <laughs> I don't know why I whistled. Running through an already sizable crowd of people, we play game after game, from ring toss to whack-a-mole to games I've never even heard of. We rarely, re we rarely win, but it's fun nonetheless. Hey, do they have that goldfish scooping game here? Of course. I didn't know you liked that game, Hee-chan. Well, I've always wanted to try it, doesn't seem too hard. Apparently it is. Are you sure about the he chan Okay, okay, we'll see. It should be right around here somewhere. But where are you going to keep your fish? Do you have a bowl for it? Well, no. Maybe he'll eat it. <laughs> Alright, he chan if we win any fish, I will give them to you. Really? Another game? Fine, then. She still pushes me excitedly toward the booth, trying to hide her enthusiasm in her eyes. Oh, it's that face. Fortunately, the two of them failed to catch a single fish, but I don't do any better. I can't help but laugh as immediately afterwards I, they start tugging me toward a particularly large, colorful style that I helped build. I remember this one. It had been a real pain in the ass to make. The booth runner, an average-looking guy with dyed brown hair, snaps to attention when he sees us walking over. I notice two things. First, it's one of those games where you throw a ball at a pyramid of opaque bottles and then try to knock over as many as possible. Four balls for 50 yen. That's pretty good. Second, there are instructions on how to play in Braille. I almost want to say something and look and see if she's named Misha see it as well. Either they don't or they don't find it strange at all. They probably don't find it strange. I mean, it's it's Braille and they one of them is mute. No, 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 no. Wait. They're at a... Oh, I'm stupid. Wow, Braille is for blind people. I'm dumb. But uh, Shizune's cousin is um blind. So And also, this is a handicap school. So, yeah. It wouldn't be weird for them to be Braille here. Hey, it's good to see you, Hakamichi. Thank you so much for helping with this booth. Having fun? Shizune glances over toward Misha, who signs everything to her in a flash, then beams at the operator. Huh, it was nothing really at all. Really? Yeah, this is great. I think the best festival you put together yet. Sh Shikari, we'd like to play this. That's okay, right? Of course, it would be really great if you would just give your cute, hard-working student council representatives a prize for all the hard hours you put into making this possible. <laughs> no. <laughs> if anything, Shiraki has balls. Hey, I built the stall. It's a brack -baking, brack back breaking job, too. But I wasted two hours of my life. I think I deserve at least a free round. And me. Me, too. Uh, after some hesitation, he eventually gives in and hands each of us four balls with a shrug. Barely a second later, she's and Misha dump theirs in front of me. What gives? Don't tell me that after making such a big deal about it, you two aren't going to even play. And even after we ganged up at Sh Shiraki. Yeah. <laughs> you stay out of this, please. Shizune turns to me and begins waving her hand dismissively. Misha appears torn between translating for her and consoling the booth operator. Hee-chan, what's your sense of chivalry besides I, Shi-chan, have a policy against throwing balls? 
She only likes handling them. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, sorry, Hicha. I don't know if my aim is that good either. You must be pretty good at these things, though, right? Right? It shouldn't be a problem for you. This looks simple enough. The balls aren't even that far. The bottles are not even that far away. The only challenge is that these are wiffle balls. I throw one of the bottles hard, and it bounces off unceremoniously. What the hell? Uh, yeah, it's not as easy as it looks. There's water inside the bottles. Trade secret. That's not very fair. This must be why it's four balls for 50 yen. How devious. Come on, Heecha, you can knock him down. You have 11 more chances. Go! Maybe you should do it. She's A, do you want to try? <laughs> that was the most attractive yawn I've ever done. <laughs> She's in it empathetically shakes her head from side to side. I laugh. This is actually pretty fun. Winding up, I throw another ball at the pyramid of bottles and manage to get them to budge slightly. Both Shizne and Misha are casting longing glances toward a doll shaped like a cat. All in all, they really aren't that different. I sometimes I wonder if Shizne would sound like Misha if she could talk. No, they're not that alike. I throw another ball, realizing it's actually quite simple. If I can heat the two bottles in the middle bottom row at the same time, it's an easy win. Already a small crowd beginning to gather, so the pressure really is on me. Nine more shots. Winding up like a baseball pitcher, I throw as hard as I can, and the bottles come tumbling down. Oh, it's ugly! <laughs> fear! There's only fear in my eyes! Triumphantly, I grab my girlish cat doll prize, and Misha laughs uproariously, as if it was her who won it. She just stares at me with her usual bright expression. It's clearly she wants a doll, too. Heechan, congratulations! What are you going to do with that doll? There's no right answer. I have to tread carefully. I do not know. Well, I'll take it if you don't want it. Unless you want to give it, keep it for yourself, he chan I didn't know you like dolls. How delicate. I don't. I have no use for this. Can I have it then? Her, their eyes are drilling into my soul. This is a decision I don't want to make. I turn back to the booth. Hey, do you have one more of this one? Actually, yeah, just one more. Okay, set everything up again. I want to try for that one as well. I have eight tries. As soon as the game is set up again, I throw as hard as I can, but miss. Trying to win another one? Taking the easy way out, Hee-chan. If it's that easy, you could try it. No thanks! So Hee-chan, could you at least put the doll down while you throw the balls? No. There's only one more left. If you better get it, if you fail, I'll kill you. What a clever way to duck out of giving me that doll, though. And by me, I mean me! Ha, <laughs> just kidding! I could see Misha didn't mean any harm from it, and she seems to enjoy her joke, smiling at it, but she looks a little depressed afterwards. I decide to hand her the doll, at least while I'm trying to win the other one. It's kind of hard to aim holding a giant cat. Thank you, Hee-chan. Hee-chan seems happy, Hee-chan, but you're gonna win one for me too, right? This is what I'm trying to do! <clears throat> I throw again, but <laughs> my aim is way off this time. My arm feels kind of heavy as well, as if blood isn't flowing to it properly. I scold myself mentally, thinking that it's pathetic I could get tired from something like this. Then I realize, maybe it's because of my heart. If it is, then I don't want to think. It's depressing out that even something as small as this is enough to make me realize my own mortality. I guess there won't even be time to when I'll, when I'll be able to forget about it. Even today, when I thought I would be able to just enjoy myself on this beautiful night and in this beautiful place, I can't exp escape the reason I'm here. I never felt so at peace in my life, in this place which is like nowhere else I've ever been. It's, all hard, it's hard now to keep from thinking the unthinkable, that I may have just been sent here to die. These past few days have been some of the best of my life, the first time in a long time that I felt truly alive. But in the end, it's I'm someone who finds myself reminded that every time he climbs too many stairs or throws a ball too hard that it could die at any second. I'm always limited by this. I feel depressed by that, and angry as well. In the end, I care about my life, and I enjoy it, and now it's more transient than ever before. I wonder that what it is that could finally do me in. It could be anything. If I'm this weak and pathetic, a bad fall, a punch to the chest, a stray baseball, and now I've lost my will to keep playing this game, but I keep playing anyway. Oh fuck, no! Suddenly I feel a split second sensation in the pain of pain in my chest. It comes and goes instantaneously, but it's enough to make me stumble just a bit. She still jumps back, startled. She comes closer, staring at me with concern. Misha puts her hand on my shoulder. Hey, he chan you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I don't feel real too good right now. I think I'm sick. I don't think I can go on. Misha frowns. Don't strain yourself. If you're that sick, you'll just make yourself sicker. Look, the festival's just getting started and we'll be playing games for a while. We can take a little break if you're tired. Good idea, Shi-chan. I'm feeling a little tired too. I think we're all a little worn out, running all over the school, Hee-chan. I know. They don't seem to be notice anything unusual. That's good. We walk through the sea of people, with Misha carefully pointing out the faces of everyone she knows. She's now holding a stuffed cat in her arms, cradling it absentmindedly. It seems like they're having fun. I kind of want to see the picture of her cradling the cat doll. Sounds cute. Suddenly I feel a pang of guilt. Because of my poor health, we all had to stop. Hee-chan, we're both feeling kind of hungry. How about you? 
I'm not as hungry as I could be, but I do want something to eat. That's good enough, Heechan. So what should we go get? Doesn't really matter to me. Ah, how about sandwiches then? We need something to drink too. Me, she'll get everything. What? <laughs> she still looks at me and smiles. I realize she might be trying to cheer me up with a joke. I laugh. Heechan's getting kind of crowded, so we might not be able to eat here. It's getting kind of loud too. Maybe we should eat, go eat up on the roof. That's fine with me. We might not have a nice view. And there could be a little breeze. Okay then. I, I guess I should get the food and drinks now. So I'll see you two then. She gives a clumsy wave and runs off. Before I before I didn't notice how paper lanterns look illuminating. I didn't know how the paper lanterns look illuminating the dark night. But now I'm able to see it. It really is an amazing sight. Fireflies float overhead. And their soft glow making it look as if it's snowing lights in the night sky. This type of thing wouldn't be impossible to see in the city. Shizde tugs at my sleeve, impatiently crossing her arms, frowning as if to show displeasure at me for getting distracted. You know I don't know how to read sign language. Come to think of it, it's kind of stupid of me to have said that to a deaf person. She wouldn't have heard it. I shrug, hoping to show her that I don't understand. She shakes her head and dismisses it with a wave of her hand. Maybe we should get around to asking Misha for some lessons on sign language. Wouldn't hurt! Climbing up to the roof, I find myself in awe again at the sheer size of the school. The grounds are so expansive, I can't believe I hadn't realized it before. As I walk across the roof, trailing behind Shizune, I can't help but be taken in by the stars shining in the sky. Shizune and I sit on the bench. She, she, she seems like she's in a good mood as she smiles, softly while the breeze blows through her hair. We look th down at the festival, which looks like a sea of glowing amber lanterns and the waving papers, fans teeming with people, some of them fest festively dressed in yukata. In fact, most of the girls should be wearing yukata. I wonder why she's and me she didn't dress up today. I don't understand the fetish or like the the sexual the sexual tendency of wearing a yukata. I don't get it. Like I get I know it's a pretty dress, but like I don't know. I could be weird. Mm. There could be the two of them would look nice in yukata. I briefly think about what types they would wear. She's never probably go with something traditional. However, however, however. She, Misha is a bit harder to place. Misha arrives, panting as she runs to us, trying to keep the food in her arms from falling. Setting everything on the ground, she lets herself drop backwards. Jesus. <laughs> that took a while. Come on, you, don't, you, do, you two didn't tell me what you wanted, so I got some rice punch, some sandwiches, and some candy too. A little bit of everything. That's great. Let's dig in. Misha takes a small bite of a... Uh, 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 la, la, la. <laughs> Misha takes a bite out of a small triangular sandwich. So, Hicha, what do you think of the festival? It's nice, isn't it? Yeah. <clears throat> the stars are nice tonight. This couldn't have been more perfect day. The sound of people talking below us is like a faint music alongside the chirping of cric crickets in the distance. I take a sip from the can of punch and look over at Misha, who can looks as if she's sleeping comfortably with her back stretched out and a half full can of apple juice balanced on her stomach. She stays sits with her, with her legs drawn close to her, rocking back and forth slowly like an impatient child as she stares up at the sky. Two of them are so cute. I can look around and see many students holding hands with their girlfriends or their boyfriends. Duh! <laughs> I wish I had that. Tear. <laughs> Not too far from us on the on the roof, there are couples gazing at, up at the stars or down at the lights of the festival, holding each other's hand. A part of me wants that. Same here, man. <laughs> Looking at Tuesday and Misha, I wonder if maybe I should ask one of them out someday. I wonder if it would be worth the risk. Do it, do it, do it, do it. The golden hands moving across the face of the delicate watch on She's Nate's Rich catch my eye, and I see that it's getting kind of late, but the festivities are still going strong. She's Nate's still holding the stuffed cat I won by the paw. She notices me looking at it. Offhandedly, she offers it to me. I smile, wanted to ask her what I would do with it, but she wouldn't be able to understand me. I shake my head, trying, to her best, trying my best to tell her to keep it, hoping she'll understand. As I look toward the school, I can see before me so many people, all of which are happy and cheerful. Watching them makes me feel content. There really was something. The, today was worth it. But I can't shake the feeling of guilt and melancholy from earlier. They keep hanging on to me, and I can't let them go. She's a sign something to me, and I can't understand her. No matter what I say, she won't be able to hear me. I can't understand you, Shizune. Well, whatever. I wonder if we could both consider ourselves at fault for this. Anyway, I'm sorry for not being able to understand. You know, I'm almost, almost glad I chose... Uh, but, but, you know, I'm almost glad that you tried to coerce me to come here. If I attempt to date you, though, I have, might have to think more about that side of you. No, actually, I'm glad. Today was nice. You'd be cuter if you smiled more. You have a nice smile. <laughs> she just kept talking! What the fuck? <laughs> she stands up, arms behind her back, looking authoritative over and confident against the backdrop of stars. The fuck? 
What is this pose? Suddenly, Shizuke throws her arms out toward the open sky, seeming to hold it between her hands, as if telling me to look at everything in front of me. The school illuminated... Whoa, whoa, whoa! That was an awesome animation! A very simple one, but cool. The school bathed the festival's glow and lit up in the, with the call for Yukata. The roof illuminated by fireflies. The sky is so vast that it imposes the feeling of awe onto you. What does she want? It slowly dawns on me with time. The beautiful scene before me is proof that there are things wonderful enough without, that spoiling them with a bad mood would be unforgivable. And I can feel the weight of Shizune's personality pressing onto the point further. Thanks, I guess. I look away and Shizune grabs by the shoulder and her watch brushing against my cheek. With a left hand, she points up at the sky. With faint pops, fireworks begin to go off in the sky, each one spreading a shower of bright colors that slowly fade into the dark. I can even recall the last time I saw fireworks at all, much less a display this large, not to mention it seems that they're being launched from the school. It, al it almost seems impossible to believe. The lights in the sky mingle with a second salvo from the town below, and they seem to time to complement each other, like two parts of a duet. They continue for maybe 15 more minutes, and then stop. She then realizes her hand is still on my shoulder and withdraws it carefully, looking a little uncomfortable. Duh. Cute. Regaining her composure, she grins with her hands on her hips and her chest thrust out in front of her. It's in these moments that she seems most like a regular teenage girl, energetic, happy, and carefree. I eat th thoughtfully with She's name, the two of us looking out at the gradually thinning crowds below in silence. She's just leaning forward slightly, her chin resting softly on her hands and a contented look on her face with just a hint of wistfulness. All the while still gently holding onto the stuffed cat's paw. I start feeling tired and tell her that I see, I'll see her in Misha tomorrow without even realizing that she can't hear me and then start walking back to the dorms. I feel warm and alive, even in this chilly night air. The image of Shizne standing forcefully before the stars of themselves, denying myself pity, does not leave my mind easily. If, if it only takes a moment for there to be love, I think I may be falling in love with her. Just a little bit. And we're on the path! <laughs> three points for three friends. Aw, oh, Misha's just in the back over there. Oh, she's smiling. Never mind, we're good. Oh no, it's it's slowly devolving into a frown. Aw. Oh. Unfortunate. Learning to read. But anyway, guys, I think that's a good place to stop for now. <clears throat> I think that's a good place to stop for now. But anyway, uh, wow, that was that was really sweet. That was plain and simple. This game just gets real sweet sometimes. But I can honestly see what's going to happen in the future. She and Misha have been inseparable forever, and I understand like the friends having a close friend for that such a, for such a long time. And, like, having a new person come in and slowly, like, like, having them, like, having your friend like that new person more than you. I don't want to say more than you. I would say in a different way that, like, it's, it feels like you're being replaced. And I know that feeling. Um, but I can honestly say that it's a harmless one. It's, it's one that needs to be resolved with communication and talking. And like, even though you're happy for those friends, you slowly feel that pang inside you that just says, well, I guess I'm not needed. <laughs> it happens from time to time and slowly but surely you, your friendship will return to normalcy and they will be dating. But it, it still hurts. It still hurts to know that like, um, there are levels of like closeness that you'll never get with certain friends and that they will enjoy the presence of others more than yours and like like that's not completely unrelated to the relationship thing i was talking about earlier but it hurts and sometimes you overthink things and sometimes you just think that hey your friends hate you and they don't want to hang out with you but hey 
That's just a, a, a person with low self-esteem talking. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you want to see more videos from me or from the series, hit that subscribe button. And you're now exiting the Shadyverse. My name is Shades, and I hope you've enjoyed your day in the shade. You are now going to the end card.